Hey guys, what's up? It's Matt Lane, and welcome back to another weekly podcast episode. Today is episode five. That is right, we have survived five episodes. I don't know how we managed to do it. I've, I've only threatened to quit twice. <laughs> only. Now, granted, it was very valid reasons involving clerics and some weird tree incidents, but we won't get into that. <laughs> you know what? That tree had it That tree had it coming. Okay? We won't get into that because Jay gets very salty. Uh <laughs> But uh, today's going to be a special episode. Uh, we're not going to do our typical format. So if you have stopped by the podcast before, just know we're not going to do our typical thing. And if you haven't, well, it doesn't really matter because what do you know? Uh, but <laughs> today we're just going to talk about a couple of topics. Uh, just We kind of just pick some things that we just like to talk about and just, hey, we're just going to talk about them. And that's just kind of <laughs> all there is to it. Um, Nifty. I guess I will go first. Um, we'll talk about some Dark Souls, uh, specifically, we'll kind of focus on Dark Souls 3, but if, uh, I guess if anything comes up, we can kind of be, uh, very open about it, but, uh, it's one of my favorite series to play, uh, and possibly one of my favorite series of all times, not necessarily Dark Souls, but just the, the, uh, Souls area in general, so including Bloodborne in that um it's just some of my favorite games just because it's it's so well put together and and very unique in and of itself um for those who have never played the game i'm sure the obvious thing that everybody knows about it is it's difficulty because it's one of the things that it's known for um, it's basically the dark souls of dark souls <laughs> right and it's very intriguing because the the large amount of people that play it and get really far into it will try to tell you that it's not as hard as everybody makes it out to be. Um, and I, I'm that person that I'm kind of on that ship because uh, I've played it enough to where it's not this just blatantly impossible game to me anymore like it was when I started. Because when, when I started, I was like, holy crap, what what am I doing with my life? I know that feeling <laughs> very well. And Jay's just now getting into it, so I know he's... Yes, I've, I've just <laughs> recently re-picked up the game after rage quitting it a few months ago. Right, so I know he's, he's probably right there at it, but... Uh, it, and to be fair, the point I'm at, I still recognize that it is not an easy game. It has a lot of difficulties with it, but it's not one of those things I look back and think that this was impossible or this was unfair or anything like that, because, you know, there's plenty of old games back in the day to where that was very much the case. You're like, okay, this is just a, to a point of ridiculousness. Um, and, and Like level 99 of Duck Hunt. <laughs> right. Uh, Look it up. It's a thing. It's, you're you're going to have a bad time. Uh, <laughs> but it's just one of those things that it's just really not that way, because Dark Souls, in all of its difficulty, always has something to help balance that now the kicker comes in that the game doesn't tell you or make it very obvious for what you should do so one of the added difficulty parts of the game is you having to figure out what will work and what won't work um so it's less that the game itself is just this ridiculous difficulty it's the fact that they're not going to give you any hints for anything so you're kind of on your own and trying to really figure out what works and what doesn't and it, it definitely, I think that is, in my opinion, what adds to the grandiose difficulty of the games. Um, but that being said, whenever you do figure out those things, that definitely takes a huge load off your shoulders because then you kind of start figuring out, OK, this is what I need to do. Uh, and then it becomes more obvious as you go and then you start figuring out how the game mechanics work. But it, I chose to talk about this topic because we got a DLC coming out soon and it's probably going to be the last Dark Souls that we see. So it's kind of a big deal. Well, I say that the the original writer for Dark Souls wants to have Dark Souls 3 as the last one. He does not want to do any more. Um, he is very uh, upfront with the fact that he doesn't want to overdo a series he thinks that three is a good number and yeah you don't want to give it the like the call of duty or the assassin's creed treatment, right you know? like he's like look like it's good yes yeah, it'd be fun to make another but you, you need to leave it as it is before you overdo it and then make it something like you just said yeah let let a let a good thing be good and then just like kind of do a bloodborne thing like it's the same kind of game but it's not dark Souls, right you know? speaking of that because uh, i can jump to that topic for a second that's a very cool parallel to compare because 
although it is very much a Souls game, it's very much not the same. Like it's it's weird. Um, and I know you've played a little bit of the two, so you've played enough to where you probably know the differences. The the biggest thing, notably, would be the play style. Right. Uh, drastically. It's much faster paced. Drastically different. Uh, Bloodborne is very aggressive. You have that uh, mechanic known as regain to where if you get hit, you have a brief amount of time to where you can hit the enemy and get that health back. Uh, whereas Dark Souls is the complete opposite. Like, you don't need to get hit at all, so you need to hold that shield up kind of at all times unless you're trying to get stamina back. Um, it, Bloodborne in and of itself is actually probably my... F- it's so hard to say this out loud, but I think it might be one of my favorite games of all time. There you go. Um, it, I'm proud of you for saying that. It's a hard thing to say because there's so many games that, like, fight for that title. <laughs> Right. Uh, but in terms of the way I look at it at the end of the day with replay value, like I can just play these games over and over and over and not get tired of them because there's so many different ways you can play it. There's so many different outcomes, so many different endings, so many different builds that you can pretty much completely change how you play the game. Uh, there's so many hidden secrets and little Easter eggs like everywhere that you just miss them all the time. And it's just really cool. Uh, it's got a wicked unique. Um, sorry, my Boston just came out. Wicked unique guy. Uh, <laughs> a wicked unique um, <clears throat> way of telling the story of the game. It basically does it through the items you obtain. Oh yeah, like it. It, it doesn't give you virtually any dialogue <laughs> out of uh, from any characters, like verbally spoken. The vast majority of any sort of lore you get is from reading an item. Uh, so it's that's why a lot of people don't really like the game because they don't look into it they play it and then they're like what the heck just happened like i didn't get any story i don't even know what just happened it's like well you you got to go we'll figure it out <laughs> kind of thing yeah it's like well that's stupid it's like well then don't play dark souls <laughs> that's, that's just how because dark souls is stupid that's just how the game is like it's it is that's how they all three of them have been so it's not like it's anything new <laughs> So if you're one of those people that you want the game given to you and you don't want to have to do a lot of work to figure it out, this is not going to be the game for you because the story is not going to be there. However, if you really are that and you still want to play the game, there's plenty of people on YouTube that you could go like just listen to them explain the story. Um, and if you just wanted to figure it out that way, it kind of takes away from the experience. But if you're that type of person and you still want to play the game, then that would be a good way to do it. But that's really all I have for this uh, category. Um, Dark Souls and or Bloodborne, any of that. I highly recommend both the games. Uh, really fun to me. Really good experience. Had a lot of fun doing. Had a lot of fun learning. And it was very unique. And you feel very accomplished when you oh, <laughs> when you yeah. actually get good at these games. You, it's, it's the biggest sense of accomplishment I've ever felt in any game ever. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll just tell a quick personal story. I'll cut into my own time. Um, <laughs> so I've I recently re-picked up Dark Souls 3. Um, I hadn't gotten very far. I was on the third boss, just this stupid looking giant tree thing with pustules all over it. <laughs> and um, and I knew how to kill the boss. That was never an issue. But actually doing it is hard because the boss hurts you. The boss, there's other enemies in there that hurt you. Um and the game is just difficult in general or whatever. And it took me a long time. But finally, I, you know, you learn it. You like, OK, well, you know, charging in like this doesn't work. So what if I try to stay behind it like this works a little bit better. But at the end of the day, the hitbox is on the front of the boss. So I still have to get there. Mm-hmm. And then you figure out like, oh, here's a weak point in that. And then like as as you learn it. You're, you're teaching yourself through learning. You don't have friggin Navi the fairy popping up like hit it in the weak spot. It's like. <laughs> You, you're teaching yourself, you did it yourself, you accomplished it yourself, and it just feels really good. Uh, very much so, and it, it, that goes with every single part of it. Like, it never stops, which is what makes it so good, especially by the time you get to the end, because they get more difficult as they go. Oh, good. Uh, and <laughs> Oh, goody, that's what I wanted to hear. Thanks, man. Uh, and the DLCs are notoriously, like, the hardest part of any of it, so if you ever really want to get a challenge... That's where you go for that. So since the DLC is dropping soon-ish, about how much does the DLC usually go for? They're usually 15 to 20, depending on where you get it from. Um, okay. So it's not that bad. Little much for me, but... <clears throat> well, it's I, a lot. It's more than your... T- you know, we 
We need to dedicate an episode to DLC sometime and talk about the right way to do DLC and the wrong way to do DLC. But we'll we'll do that another time. <laughs> wrong way to do DLC. For premiums. now, for now, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and talk about another gaming no-no. Um, and we're going to talk about some mobile games and some styles that I don't love too much. Um, and specifically, I'm going to be taking a look at Nintendo games. The Nintendo mobile market has recently kind of boomed and kind of expanded. Um, I guess you can kind of count Pokemon Go as a Nintendo mobile game. It does. The Pokemon company was very involved in it, and they're owned by Nintendo or whatever. But um, and and Pokemon Go, everything that that failed with that had a hundred percent to do with Niantic. Absolutely. Um, and <laughs> it it was kind of a, a sad story. Um, it. It's, it, whatever we're gonna leave it as it is everyone knows about pokemon go it won mobile it's still one mobile game of the year in 2016 um so we're gonna go with that but i'm gonna talk about two different nintendo games that have recently been released on iphone and one on android the other one i think is coming to android soon mm -hmm. and that's gonna be mario run and fire emblem heroes um so mario run was the first one released on on the iphone um and i downloaded it at at first, like, they had said, like, oh, it's going to come at a cost, which I don't have a problem paying for a game, even even a mobile game. I know that, like, for me, I like free games, but for a mobile game that I know I'm going to play and I know I'm going to get a lot out of, I don't mind um, paying, you know, five, six bucks for a game or whatever. Um, so Mario Run, I, I go to download it, and it was free, and I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. So I grab it. Um and what it did, and a lot of people glossed over this, is it let you try the game before you bought it. They were like, it only lets you do three levels, and then you have to pay for the rest of them. It's like, well, no, it's a game that costs $10, but they let you try it to know if you like it before you spend the $10 right. on it, um, which I thought was actually a good idea. I thought $10 was a little steep, and if you ask me, it's not quite worth $10. I would have put like seven max. Um, and I know like oh, $3, who cares? Yeah, well, it is what it is. Um, I, I, would, I would agree. That was that was one of my big hiccups with that game. Because um, me personally, I, I didn't view it the way of uh, oh, they making me pay like the rest for $10. I, I, I was very understanding of the fact that, oh, cool, they're letting me play and then I can decide if I want to buy it from there. But yeah. when, I, when I saw that it was 10 I was like, ah, I mean... It, if it's going to be <clears throat> really lengthy, it'd be worth it. But it kind of showed how many levels that were on there. It's like that for it being mobile. Yeah, they were very they were very upfront about the whole game, which was great. Right. But for it being mobile and being kind of as short as it was, I was like 10. Uh, I'm kind of like you. I think 10 was a bit much. Um, and I, I never bought it personally. Just because like, ah, I'll, I'll probably just skip this for now. But uh, just kind of being that little cheap guy waiting to see if they ever drop the price on it. <laughs> yeah, and there was a statistic floating around. I didn't verify this, um, so I don't know if this is true or not, but the statistic that was floating around on the internet was like 1% of everyone who downloaded Mario Run mm -hmm. then bought the remainder of the levels. Ooh. So I think, and when you see a statistic like that, you're like, okay, it costs too much, Nintendo. Right. You need to pull it back a little bit. I think $5 is a bargain. All right, $5 would have been like, dude, for 5 bucks, I get this. Entire experience. There's no ads. It's not freemium. There's there's nothing like that. It's just it's just a full game for five bucks. I think that's a steal. And um, you know, hopefully there will be a price drop someday, and you can pick it up. I have the whole game because I got an iTunes gift card for Christmas. I didn't know they still made See, those. That would be a good thing to use an iTunes gift card on. <laughs> exactly. So I I had like a thirty dollar iTunes gift card, and I spent a third of it on this game. And do I regret it? Not really, because like I still haven't spent the other twenty of it yet, so I don't care. <laughs> um, but moving on to the other game, um, this one just recently came out. Um, Fire Emblem Heroes. Um, I've never played a Fire Emblem game before. Neither have I. And at this point, it's just kind of like, there's so many, I don't know where to start, and I don't have the time to play them all, um, because I'm a busy adult with many important things to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Nailed it. You can edit that out or not, I don't care. Um, no, I'm leaving, leaving it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Um, so, even though I've never played a Fire Emblem game, I do not feel lost in this at all. Um, and I've actually been kind of enjoying myself with it. The flip side of the coin is this game is completely free, but it's freemium. Um, mm. So the way it works is 
you you have a set of characters. You're given you're given like you make a team of four characters and you're given four characters off the bat. But then you can summon other heroes and the other heroes are just like characters from other Fire Emblem games like Marth and Roy. If you've ever played a Smash Bros game, you're familiar with them. But then there's other ones you might not have heard of like this dude Gunther who's voiced by the same guy who did Albert Wesker and uh Ella Wood and all these other characters. I literally have the game open right now, so um and I don't know who any of these people are, but they are awesome, and I love them. Um, but to unlock heroes, you need orbs. And Nintendo, they give you some for free to start with. Uh, most people wait till they have 20 to summon a hero, because it costs five orbs to summon one hero. But if you summon five heroes in one session, then you basically get one free. It it like It costs like one less orb each time kind of it goes down to like four and then four and then four and then three um so you can you only spend 20 orbs and get five heroes instead of 25 so a lot of people wait till they have 20 um i'm just gonna pull up real quick how much it costs to purchase an orb keeping in mind you'd want 20 um to buy three orbs costs a dollar 99 um 10 is six bucks and 23 is 13 dollars See, that's like not even trying to hide it. Like that's just obviously a freemium at that point. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's but the the other thing about this is I've never felt like I need to spend money on this game. No, I haven't. Um, I haven't even spent any of my gift card money on this game because it gives you orbs for free for completing story missions. Um, it gives you orbs for free for um, signing in on the weekends. I don't know why they're just like weekend bonus have two orbs, and I'm like, oh, thank you. And so it takes a little while to stack up, but if you like, if you really want like one of the special characters, like Roy or Marth or something like that, it's it's completely RNG based, and you're just going to be spending orbs and spending orbs. Um, and I don't think it's worth putting money into because the story mode is finite. You know, at the end, like once you run out of story, it's like okay, you can go back and replay it, but like, it, I don't know, it's, it doesn't seem too worth it to me. Um, but that's my gripe with freemium things in general. And again, I think the prices are too high. I think $13 for 23 orbs is ridiculous. Well, but. That makes a very good point as to why I, I typically stay away from paying for mobile games is because um, it doesn't have... I very rarely see any sort of mobile game that you're going to pay for that's going to have replay value to it. Um, right. Typically, once you've done it, like you may do it a time or two again, but there's really no purpose to other than just redoing it. Cause it's not like uh, dark souls, for instance, to where you could play it a million times and experience it different. Now, granted that's a $60 game on a console. So obviously there's huge differences there, but the point is the reason we're okay with spending that much on it is because you could play this time and time and time and time and time again. It's not just going to be a, a play for a couple of hours and then I'm done kind of thing so right. that's that's what that's why for me with mobile games it's it's, it's gonna have to be pretty pretty good for me to spend money on like kind of like you said earlier if mario run had been five dollars i think i would have been okay with that yeah it's i don't know i think nintendo's still new to the mobile game um a lot of people were like just put pokemon red in in the 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 shop and i'll buy it and play it on my phone instead of having to download an emulator that doesn't work half the time <laughs> yeah, I, would, um, I would i'd be okay with that but nintendo doesn't want to do that they don't want to put any games that are they want to make new games kind of meant for the phone and like mario run is a great example of that it's meant for an iphone um or 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 a mobile phone a, a smartphone um it's it's made for it instead of fumbling around with a fake d-pad on the screen or whatever it's, you know, it's an Endless Runner game, which, you know, they can be fun. I enjoy Endless Runner. You know, there was a, a Rayman game um, that was an Endless Runner, and I loved that game. Um, it was free. Uh, Rayman Jungle Run, I think it's called. It's I think it's free. So it's a full game. It's not free. I mean, you can download different skins or whatever, but, like, who cares? Now, um, how did you feel, just speaking of Nintendo mobile games, um, kind of going back to Pokemon mm -hmm. Go, um, did you ever feel like that one was a freemium i mean by definition yes pokemon go is a freemium game but it's one of the ones that i've never felt the need to spend money on um and i guess i'm a little spoiled because i live in a city and if you live there in a is. city um <laughs> there it is yeah if if you live out in the sticks like my my brother and i live about 15 to 20 minutes away from each other um, I live in a city. My brother lives in a smaller town where there's fewer landmarks. Um, he's just the next town over, but still it's, and it's a completely different experience for the two of us. Absolutely. That was um, going to be the, the biggest thing I pointed out to where 
as we as you stated earlier, Niantic was definitely the biggest flop of all this entire uh, game itself because they. I feel like they had to have thought about it. I I don't know. I've never been in game developing, so I really can't say from a personal standpoint. But when you have a game the way it is, you feel like you have to compensate for different size cities because it's not like you're only you've got five cities in this country or something. There's a crap ton of different cities with various amounts of different population and landmarks and stuff. So they had to have known things like this. And I, I guess when they looked at it, they probably just wanted to go with whatever had the most populous and was hoping that that would carry them. Um, but yeah. coming from me, I know Jay lives in Boston and I live kind of in South Mississippi and I'm not just in the middle of nowhere. Like I'm in a city, but man, like it, unless you got a lot of time <laughs> in your day, it's really hard to get a lot of Pokeballs. So there was a lot of people around here that I would see buying Pokeballs. I was like, man, like <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. And like there, there are mobile freemium games that like they really do push spending money on. Like, for example, the first iPhone game I really played a ton of was the Simpsons tapped out. Um, and that game, they weren't really shy about saying, spend money on this game um, because you had your premium currency. I made a whole freaking video about this on my channel, so you can go watch it. Um, Selfless plug there. But there, there were some things you could not do unless you spent money on the game. In Pokemon Go, you, you can do everything. It's just going to take you more time. That's really all it comes down to. understandable. Um, I, th I think... Yeah. Uh, for people who are Pokemon Go fans are still sticking around with it. I think the biggest thing, the biggest thing that has killed people is just the way Niantic's handling everything. The, the Oh, I would say handled past tense. It, well, the the battle system out the gate, I'll just go ahead and say it. I hate it. I didn't care for it. I don't know why you would go away from something that was so engraved and accepted as a good system to begin with. Um I guess just trying to make it its own thing, whatever. But I, I, I didn't think it's—I think it's better suited for the kind of game it is. I would actually—I didn't like it at first, but once I learned like how to actually do it, I was like, "Oh, this actually is a really nice, good way of doing things within a mobile game." Yeah, like it's not difficult, but just—I don't know. When I think of Pokemon, I like the battle system of Pokemon. Like it's one of my favorite parts about it. This kind of strategy, kind of thing, to where. You have that in this one, but you're also having to do real time touch and drag. And depending on your connection, you're kind of at the mercy of that. Well, that's that's what killed this game was the connection mm -hmm. issues. That's that solely, in my opinion, was the only that was the only bad thing about the game was. the. Connection. But see, that's why I kind of think it should have been that system, because like if you're going to have something that has to be connected to a server anyways, and you're basing it your combat system upon like real time response and you're having connection problems, then you don't need to have a combat system that is based on connectivity. <laughs> uh, Cause that just kind of shoots yourself in the foot. But uh, that, and then drawing out all these huge promotions of events and stuff like that. And then where are they? <laughs> like <laughs> what? That's true. There's not been a, I mean, this game released July 7th. Yeah. It is currently, at the date of this recording, I'm just going to go ahead and break the fourth wall here. It's February 12th. We have not had a single legendary Pokemon released yet. And I kind of thought we would have had one by Christmas. And that was like one of the biggest uh, promo things about the game before it came out. Like you had a trailer of people all meeting up in this one area to catch a Mewtwo or something. Uh, yeah, it was uh, Times Square, New yep. York. <clears throat> and nothing. Nothing whatsoever. And then... They release Gen 2 only for it to be a just back slap across the face. Like, oh, well, it's just going to be the babies of Gen 2. And you can't catch them. You can only hatch them. I'm like, come on, Niantic. Like, you're... <laughs> that was that was the other thing is they're like, oh, we're going to make it super... Like, when they first released them, they're like, we're going to make it super easy for you to catch and or to get the eggs and to... where Like, every single egg is going to contain these Pokemon so you can get them super easily. I hatched, over the course of that period, I hatched 16 eggs. One of them was a Johto Pokemon. I got friggin' Igglybuff. Which I'm sure you were thrilled about. <laughs> I wanted an Elekid. Or a Magby. 
Yeah, but we can, we can talk all day about the flaws of Neantic. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we're grossly over time at this point. Uh, you know, we didn't really have... It's episode five, man. You gotta live a little. <laughs> all right, all right. It's your show, dude. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, we, we can go ahead and wrap that up. I guess it's just Jay's gonna throw it out there that we're trying to stick to time and stuff. Uh, <laughs> Sorry for being the dad. Oh, whatever. <laughs> you just got on to me the other day for being a dad for you in Dark Souls. <laughs> <laughs> he sends me a text basically saying like oh you're getting good at the game man i'm proud of you i'm just like thanks dad <laughs> little pat on the back <laughs> i mean like it's it's a good feeling when you finally like accomplish something in dark souls like you said earlier. it absolutely was and i appreciated the text but just the way you worded it was like just such a dad text it was hilarious <laughs> i get i don't know i'm, I'm okay with this <laughs> this works out but uh i think that'll be a good wrap-up point um for today's podcast um as always thanks you guys for stopping by and listening hopefully we didn't bore you too much going kind of outside the typical format in today's episode just kind of yeah, it was a little more free form a little more free form just kind of having fun just kind of talking just doing whatever which we can talk for days so it's just kind of one of those things that's not that hard to do it's like ah, hey, let's just do it uh but that's gonna be it for today's episode uh make sure to, as always check out some of jay's channels uh for his youtube and his twitch the link will be in the descriptions below uh, and question of the day for episode five. Got to put Jay on the spot and say, Jay, you pick the question of the day today. Go ahead. Whatever um, you want. What's your favorite mobile game? Oh, boy. Oh, that's a tricky one. Um, I'm going to go and answer this so that I have a good answer. Say my favorite mobile game right now, because I feel like this one kind of changes over time as yeah you're you're not wrong with that yeah okay so favorite mobile game right now uh, right now is actually a Yu-Gi-Oh game oh you're playing Duel Links I'm playing Yu-Gi-Oh Duel Generation oh Duel Generation oh that's different than the one it I'm is playing. actually by Konami that's the first one I know of that they have done on mobile uh, I may be wrong on that because I'm but I'm playing a Konami Yu-Gi-Oh game it's called Yu-Gi-Oh Duel Links is it is it on mobile as well yeah. Okay, well, I guess I'm wrong on that one, but I, I thought that they, Konami had not uh, put the exact layout of Yu-Gi-Oh! It always kind of been in its own format kind of thing, um, but it's dual generation, it's literally Yu-Gi-Oh! like you would have played from the show. Oh, I see this. I might get this one instead. <laughs> There's like nothing different. So I don't know how the one that you play is. It might have like its own little... It's very different. It it only allows you, if we can just talk about Yu-Gi-Oh for a second, it only allows you three monster zones and three trap zones. Oh, no. See, like, this is this is exactly like how it would have happened in the show. or the. the yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it, and this game looks a heck of a lot better than the one I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> See, there you go. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Now, I, I will talk about this game for a little bit. It's just, you know, sure, we'll talk about the question a day longer. Why not? Sure. Um, <laughs> this game I'm down had a cool... Right it, it has a camp campaign mode Ooh. which is really cool uh and you, you could play each other too so like we could play each other later in this uh yeah, you, can, you can do that on the dual links one it doesn't really have a campaign but uh, so it has a lot of the people from the show and they have two uh modes if you will uh to where like for instance the the first person on the campaign is uh tia garner uh one of yugi's friends and you can you can fight her three times and it'll have a specific type of deck that she uses. And once you beat her three times, she switches to her harder deck and then it's way harder. But once you beat her once, you can proceed to the next one. But it gives you this opportunity to play these people as many times as you want. But at the same time, making it harder as it goes, because oh. obviously every time you beat them, you get points and you can get cards and get new stuff and make yourself better. So they're like, well, we don't just want to make you be able to infinitely make yourself better easily. So as you beat them, they get harder kind of thing. Um, and it's really cool. Uh, and it's fairly difficult. Like they don't really pull any punches on it. Like the first fight is not going to be a gimme. Um, so I, I was very pleased with it. I've been playing the crap out of it lately. So I know uh, we kind of talked a long time on that <laughs> comparatively to normal, but uh, that's okay. I, I've, I've, I've been playing the heck out of this game right now, so I have a hard time saying anything else is my favorite mobile game right now. Hmm. Uh, right. What about you? <laughs> um, well, I'm going to go ahead and just, I don't know, for me, it's just because it's new 
and I've been enjoying it. I'm going to go and just say Fire Emblem Heroes. The, the one thing I don't love about it eats the crap out of your battery. Mm. I don't know what, because it, it doesn't look like a graphically intense game. Maybe it's the fact that it connects to Game Center, and most of the games I play don't. Like, I don't know. Um, but, like, this game just destroys the battery on my phone. Those are always fun. <laughs> But it's fun. It's free. It is, you have nothing to lose. If if you're like me and you've never played a Fire Emblem game, um, and the only characters you know are from like Smash Bros, um, it's a good game. It's a tactical game. It's it's like you're you're a tactician and you're leading your troops to victory. You have to move them around the board and attack. If you've ever played like Final Fantasy Tactics or something like that, you'll love this game. Hmm. It might be. It might have to look into that at some point in time. Yeah. Tell you what. I'll play your game. You play my game. <laughs> And then we'll we'll meet back another time on another episode in the future and discuss. Okay, hold on. What what am I? Fire Emblem? Which one? Fire Emblem Heroes. Fire Emblem Heroes. Okay, it's downloading. It might. <laughs> okay, cool. Downloading right. Don't even play no games. We're just going straight to it. He downloaded mine. I downloaded his. Just to be fair. <laughs> yep. Uh, All right. So so like two episodes from now, when we get together again, we'll. Uh, We'll we'll do like a game swap. That'll be fun. <laughs> sure. Be be able to look out in episode seven when we reconvene and <laughs> talk about how we like the mobile games. Oh, uh, that'd be uh, watch watch neither All of us right. remember that. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching. I've been Let's Jays. Check out Matt Lane's channel that you're currently on. It's awful, but it's pretty good. Um, he just backhanded just, compliment. Just <laughs> I'm okay with it. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I apologize for this episode and have a fantastic day. That was awful. <laughs>